Okay, so here we go on genotypic and phenotypic ratios. So previously we've been doing percentages and we've been talking about the offspring of a Punnett square. And we might say that since we only have one of these that's 25% and 50% and 25%. Well, instead of using percentages, we're going to count them and put them over the total. So we've done our Punnett square. And we're going to look at the genotypes. The genotypes, again, are the letters. We have big T, big T, big T, little t, and little t, little t. Well, all you do for a ratio is you count. How many big T, big T's? Well, we have one out of the four. So we'll put one. Big T, little t's, we have two. So we have one and two here. So we'll put a two. Then you have a little t, little t right here, which is going to be one. Now, since they're all over 4, we can drop that 4. So the ratio comes out to be a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. Now, how do you write ratios and make sure they're in the correct order? For dominant and recessive, you always do the homozygous dominant first. Then you do the heterozygous, which is the uppercase and then lowercase. And then we have the homozygous recessive, which is the two lowercase. Phenotypic, we do the exact same thing. We just count. So we have our phenotypic ratio. We see it's tall and we see short. Well, how many tall do we have? We have this one makes it tall, so that's one. This one makes it tall, that's two. This one makes it tall, that's three. So we have three over four. And how many short do we have? Well, we have one. Again, since they're both over four, we can drop that four and make it a three to one ratio. Again, all we're doing is counting and that's it. So let's try another one. Here we have yellow is dominant to green. So big Y is yellow and little y is green. Our genotype. Well, what do we see here in the letters? We have a big Y and a little, we have big Y, little Y. Is this one and this one. And then we have little Y, little Y. So again, all you do for the ratio is you're going to count. We have two big Y, little Y. So we put a two. You put a colon in between to show that it's going to be a different set. And little y, little y is also 2. Now, you're probably wondering what happened to my big y, big y. Well, since we don't have any, you can put a 0 in front. But most of the time, since it's a 0, we just leave it off. And make sure to put our genotypes, our letters, as well. So we know what the ratio will be of. So that's why I tend to have my big Y, little y, right over my number, and my little y, little y, over my number. Now, this is a 2 to 2. We can reduce this, or divide by a common denominator, and reduce it into a 1 to 1 ratio. Phenotypes, we can also count. So, our options are going to be yellow or green. Well, this one's going to end up being yellow, because it's got a dominant y. And this one's going to be yellow, dominant y, so that's 2. So we'll put a 2 down. And then little y, little y, we also have 2. So we'll put another 2 down. Again, we can reduce those into a 1 to 1 ratio. So let's do one more. Red is dominant to blue. And this time they're using A. Our genotype for our offspring is we see that we have all big A, little a. Well, the ratio, you could put a 0 to 4 to zero, or you can leave those zeros off, which just make it a four. And our phenotype, again, well, this one's got a dominant A, so it's going to be red, dominant A, red, red, red. So our ratio would be four to zero, or you can leave off the zero and just make it four. Again, it's just counting. Now, when we move into incomplete dominance, again, it's the same thing. We just count. But this time, our phenotype has a third option. Our phenotype is not just dominant or recessive. We also have a middle or our heterozygous phenotype. So, we've got BB equals black, BW equals gray, which is mix mixing, which makes it incomplete. And then we have WW, which is white. Our genotypes, which are our letters. We have a BB. We have a BW. And we have a WW. Underneath, I always put the ratios right underneath. So how many BBs do we have? We have one. 
How many DWs do we have? We have two. And then finally, how many WWs? When we look over here, we have one, which makes it a one to two to one ratio. Again, the phenotype, we're going to have black, gray, or white, and right underneath, I'll put the ratio. We have one black, BB. We have two that are going to be grays, and those are going to be our BWs. And then we have one white, which is WW. Again, it's just counting. So when we look at BB's brown, BT's tabby, and TT's tan, if we, if we cross a, a tabby with a black, we end up with genotypes being BB, because we've got BBs here, and BT. BT. Now we don't have any TT that's going to be a zero, which can be left off. When we talk about our ratio, we're going to count again. How many big B, big B? Two. How many big T, little T? Or big T, big T, excuse me. Two. They could be reduced down to a one to one ratio. In the phenotypes, we also have brown and tabby, because that's what these are going to show, or the physical features. Again, it's going to be a 2 to 2, which can be reduced down to a 1 to 1. Let's take a look again. When we move into codominance, it's again the exact same way. It's just counting. When we take our offspring, we have big, big B, big B. We have big B, big W. And we have WW. Those are going to be our genotypes, the letters. Again, the ratio is just counting. I put them right underneath. So it's going to be a 1 big B big B. We have 2 big B W's. Then we have 1 WW. Now again, down here in the phenotype, we have three different physical features. So we have to represent all three, not just two like in dominant recessive. So we show the black. How many blacks do we have? We have one. How many spotted, which is going to be both showing, and that's why it's going to be codominant. We have two of those. And then how many whites? We have one.